I'm starting it right now, okay? Okay. And you know what? It is what it is, and we do our best, and uh, what can we do? Yeah, exactly. All right, I'll tell you when we're live. We'll be live in just a few seconds. This thing's okay. loading up. Here we go. I'm just going to send a message to my buddy. Exactly. Tell me. Okay, here. It's okay. loading up. All right, here we are. We're live. We are live with the one and only Steve Grimmett of Steve Grimmett's Grim Reaper. How are you doing, Steve, today? I'm good, thank you. I'm good, Jimmy. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We had, by the way, we were talking about snow before we started. We had 34 <laughs> centimeters of snow. To my American friends, I have no idea what that is in feet. Figured it out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Steve, That's do you know about, the conversion? Uh, yeah, it's about uh, six to eight inches, something like that. I, I, yeah, I can't really. I could do it the other way around, but yeah. Yeah, right. it's 25, uh, no, uh, 25.4 millimeters to the inch. Aha. That'll let you know, okay? So, so we're maybe. getting a big echo. I don't know where ah, that's coming from. As well as, as, well as the pinging. <laughs> a, a lot of craziness happening. All right, so let's just start off right at the bat. I want to talk oh. about Chris Tangaridis, all right? You know, yes. Tell me your thoughts about Chris. Uh, you know, we're all friends with Chris. Chris was friends with everyone. Uh, such a lovely man. Um, tell me where he placed, you know, in your life. Tell me about Chris and, you know, rest in peace, Chris. I've, I've known about Chris for a, a really long time. We started uh, getting in touch or, yeah, getting in touch, basically, uh, before I went, uh, well, it was... 2016 and we got on really well um, every time I sent him a message he would get straight back to me um, and you know I can't I, I what a nice guy you know and then I talked to him about mixing the the next Reaper album and I was really looking forward to doing it because I, I also wanted to I was going to stay with him whilst he did it and he was going to teach me all he knew about mixing and it's a real damn shame it didn't happen before he died you know because there's no one out there now to take over his position um, which is a real shame um, but uh, when I had my, my little escapade with losing my leg um, he got in touch with me at least once a week whilst well for the rest of that year for the rest of 2017 and the, the guy was just such a nice guy you know he wasn't interested in how my music was going he wasn't interested in in anything all he wanted to know was how i was you know um and i did the same thing for him because I, you know he, he, he had some problems beforehand uh before he died and i i did the same thing to him you know for him uh, just got in touch, stayed in touch, and made sure that he was okay, you know. And then to to hear that he had passed away suddenly, it was just absolutely gutting. And and I, I just uh, the, when I think about it or see his pictures, um, it just uh, really gets to me. And and you know we've lost a lot of good friends over the past few years, but I think Chris has really affected me more than anybody else so uh it's um it is a shame and we've lost as far as i'm concerned one of the, the biggest rock influences there will ever be you know? yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you were supposed to you're telling me you were supposed to produce your next album right i'm not sure if you mentioned that yeah. quickly uh, yes like how, how far ahead were you on this with chris well he was going to mix it uh and we were it with the deal was done um, it was supposed to be in October of, of last year, but uh, like I said, uh, you know, I've been, I've been rebuilding, not rebuilding, building a new studio, recording studio, and um, I, uh, I was talking to him then, but then had to put it off because of building the studio, which is maybe a couple of weeks away from being finished. And uh, so everything got put on the back burner. And what a damn shame, you know, because I missed it. So, so, uh, so just jumping right into it and sorry to cut you yeah. off. Yeah. Where are you on the new Grim Reaper album? Okay, I, since we're getting into this area, yeah. I mean, rest in peace, Chris. 
I too, we've been, we became friends over the past year, me and Chris, a lovely man, you know, yeah. always nice, always out to help, always out to help people. And I know he, he just jumped right on board to help you out as much as he could. Uh, yes. Where are you with the new Grim Reaper album? Like what stage you're at? What are you looking at in terms of a timeline? Okay. Uh, well, we've got, it's either, and I can't remember it. I, I, we've either got seven or nine songs written. And uh, basically, we wanted to write 16 or 17 songs to then come out with 12, uh, which would give us an extra track for Japan because they always want a, an extra track. Um, so that's where we stand with it at the moment. We've got seven or nine songs written, uh, ready to put to the band to do stuff with. Um, so that's, that's where we're at with it, really. I want to maybe, maybe March time start to record. So uh, it'll probably be three months after that, once it's finished, that the, the record company will get on to release it. All right, sorry, I put myself on mute to avoid any sort of background ambiance. So if you hear me disappear, I didn't leave. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I want to touch upon something else now. I mean, Steve, do you do you foresee this album being released in 2019? This new yes. Album? What my album? Yes, your album. 2018. 2018. Okay, good. Okay, it's, you're gonna make it for 2018. That's what I'm getting at. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're, like I say, we're we're too far into it now not to to wait another year. There's no point. Um, I've been out doing gigs uh, uh, all over Europe, uh, just single one-off shows, to be fair, because I just wanted to see if I could do it. Um, and, yeah, we've done it. So the next thing to do is a tour. Uh, we've got several shows coming up. Uh, no tour until May, where we're going back out to um, uh, South America to... Uh, to, to do the tour again and for me to revisit my leg in Guayaquil in Ecuador. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. So, you know what yeah. I like about you, Steve? You're like yeah. me. You can laugh at tragedy because that's the only way to get by, right? It's oh, the only way it, to get by. Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, you know, I, I didn't, when I was in hospital, I, I can't remember if, you know, what, what detail we've been into with this. But when I was in hospital, I had absolutely no one there for two weeks. I couldn't even contact Millie, and because when I went in, they took my phone from me because the, the hospital told them not to let me, you know, not to let the phone go in because it would be stolen, and um, so I couldn't even talk to her about having these operations because you know, I had three all told, and uh, the the guys and the promoter disappeared for five days. So I didn't. I'd had nobody to talk to. It was, it was awful. But and and then not only that, so I I had to sort of dig in and find inner strength from that. But also every operation I had, and I had three, five altogether. But three of them were under epidural. So you know, a squirt epidural, in your, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, in your spine, which numbs everything below where they shoot it into, and. Uh, for two of them, they were sawing my legs off, or my leg off, sorry. So, you know, I could hear them cutting through the bones. Jeez. And and on the, the final cut, which was above me, where, where you threw your femur, which is a really big bone, um, and they got the saw stuck in it twice, because it's all hand saw, you know, it's there's no nothing modern about the, the techniques at all in, in Ecuador. And, uh, you know, they got the sauce stuck in it twice. And I'm like, oh, yeah, dig, 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 dig. And, uh, and I it, mean, you it, had to see this. I can't believe they put an epidural, no. like pregnant women, they give them epidurals, right? Yeah. And you're actually watching this as it's happening to you. No, uh, no, I didn't want to watch. No, I had a screen up. There's no way I could have watched it at all. But I, I, the, the, when they cut through my femur, I could actually feel that, the vibration, no pain, but I could feel the, the vibration. And that's, like I say, it was like, now you've got to dig deep, boy, dig deep. You know, and I, and I was just thinking about all the veterans, including you know, the, uh, the, the British and Americans that came home, you know, blown to their legs, blown to bits by IEDs. And 
uh, I, I, I'm a bit of an airplane buff. I build and fly radio controlled model airplane. And I'm, a, I'm into warbirds, the Second World War aircraft. And it made me think of, of um, Douglas Bader. You know, and that poor chap lost his legs before the war. And with everything he had to get back into into the war in in the Second World War, um, to get back into a, a Spitfire and shoot Germans down, you know. So who am I? Who am I to to to, to sit there and cry about it? No way. So you know. You know. That, you know I get a, I get like a, my my tooth. I get a, a filling in my tooth, and I start crying. <laughs> 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 I got to tell you, the number one <laughs> statement when you were in the hospital, I was getting emails and, and feedback, was this guy is, what a stand-up guy. People, I, and to get back on stage, people don't understand the 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 sort of the whole, no. the, the, the whole building of walking again. And people don't get what you've done. It, it's, it's an no. incredible story, actually. And, yeah. and And actually, I just wanted to add this. Just so everybody knows, this is the one-year anniversary. We commemorate the loss of the leg. I don't know if that's the right terminology. Yeah, yeah, this is that's the correct. one year. It's on January 17th, but I did it on the 14th because there was just too many problems on the 17th to do this. So that's the reason why yeah. we're doing the show. It's to talk about the one year, what, what happened, how has life changed today, and where you're going. So continue with your leg story. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no. Well, I know, and, 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 you know, once I finally got home, because they wouldn't let me fly home to start off with, uh, because um, it, it wasn't far enough, for, sorry, the, the time up from the, the last operation, which was below knee at this point, um, it, wasn't quick, uh, it wasn't long enough for me to fly. They wouldn't let me fly, uh, because if I'd have had any major uh, problems, in the air, they would have had to turn back or go somewhere else, which would have cost them a lot of money. And I do get that. I was just desperate to get home. But uh, anyway, they wouldn't. So I had to go back in. And then I got necrosis in the in the cut, uh, which is a flesh eating disease. And uh, that's when they had to cut me above knee. Now that that changes quite a number of things. If you uh, lose your leg below knee, it's fairly quick for you to um, learn to walk again. F very quick indeed, actually. Um, but with above knee, it's totally different because uh, you then have a leg that's swinging free. And, and let me tell you, for the first time in my life, and, and th this goes for everybody who loses a limb, that you think about walking. You'd never, ever thought about walking, not even when you were learning to walk as a kid. You didn't think about it. You just got on and did it. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm walking with a limb I can't feel and one that I can. And then you've got to try and uh, uh, and get it together. You know, uh, you've got to harmonize the things. Right? And, and it really blew my mind. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything for two weeks. Um, I just couldn't get the the... The, the sink going at all so uh and then one weekend i had a bit of an epiphany and i put the leg on and started walking like ah this is what i've got to do and this is what i've got to feel da, 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 and that right okay so i got on okay then um you know, since then the leg's been modified twice uh because i lost an awful lot of weight while i was in hospital and I've now regained that weight, which is a bit of a pain, really. I've got to get rid of that. But um, uh, the the leg can be quite uncomfortable. It can be a real pain in the backside. But I'm upright and walking, so it will never be complained about. So. And, and on uh, another note, and just so everybody knows, you're a type, you're a type two diabetic, correct? I am. Yeah. Yeah. That and was just, part. Problem. And kids pay yeah. attention, you know, uh, you know, take care of yourself, take care of your feet, take care of your hands. My son's a diabetic as well. So yeah. it's really yeah. important for diabetics to really, really go check and see your doctor and try to, uh, if there's a lesson in all of this, right, you know, yeah. really. And I don't know you did. I'm not saying you didn't. It's just yeah, you yeah. got to be like extremely careful. I know because we live with it in our house too. And yeah. Chris Tangeridis. He yes, was a type two diabetic. He told me as well he was a diabetic, 
Hence yeah. the problem, the first problem that he had when he went had pneumonia, and like, or actually the last time he had pneumonia. So yeah. be careful, kids. Everybody out there, take care of yourselves. Yeah, you've you've really got to, and that's you know that that it, it, it's an absolute must. And I know most diabetics, I got to say, it were well, type two, not type one, because that's that's far more aggressive. But uh, certainly type two, you know, you can live in denial, and you know your blood sugars will be terrible. But it will get you in the end. And you've got to. You really have got to get on with it and just do it. You know, it's something that you're going to have. If you're overweight like me, you've got to get rid of it. And and uh, and I've got to. Because if I get rid of it, I may stand a chance of getting rid of the diabetes. You know, certainly. Sorry. Steve, Steve yeah, yeah. No, no, absolutely. And, you know, uh, my son's a type 1 diabetic, just so you know. Yeah. And we're living with the horrors of that. But he manages. You just got to be vigilant, right? Um, yes, you do. I just actually, we're going to go back to this. But I wanted also to get your opinion on Fast Eddie Clark. You know, he passed away too. It, it's yeah. shocking. The new wave of British heavy metal, you know, Motorhead, and we know it. Have yeah. you ever met the guy? Did, did you know Fast I, Eddie? No, I did not. No, uh, the only people I ever met was Filthy Phil and... Um, Oh, no, I'm lying. I, d I met them all, actually, apart from Fast Eddie, because Fast Eddie wasn't in the band. I met them in Germany, and uh, uh, it was Phil Campbell, guitar, uh, Filthy Phil on drums, and, and obviously Lemmy. Uh, they came to see uh, us play at uh, the docks in Germany, and I can't remember what, what town it was now. But, uh, yeah, they came to see us there, because they, they played the night before, and uh, they came to see us because Onslaught, before I joined them, had toured with them. And uh, so, yeah, I got to meet them all. And, uh, did, did and then you... met us all later on, or a few years down the line, actually, because he, he lived just down the road from me. So uh, I got to meet him in Cheltenham. And uh, every time I bumped into him, he was like, Hey, Ch Cheltenham, how you doing? You know? but of course, they're all dead. <laughs> it's like, uh, I think I'm just clinging on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah has as it had an influence on you uh, you know um... yes yes definitely i mean you know that i've got several of their tapes all upstairs uh because until recently i hadn't got a tape machine to play all this stuff on and uh so uh yes they were a big influence on me and uh ace of spades was probably my favorite album and you know that that lineup is now gone and and, uh, and what do you say it's a tragedy really i mean i know you know um uh lemmy was into his 70s uh i can't remember phil i can't remember how how phil died i think it was some a disease i know that for sure uh yeah. I can't remember either, but uh, yeah, it, but, uh, it was something and, else. For uh, Wurzel, you know, and now obviously we've lost Fast Eddie to, that, that was pneumonia, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it pneumonia. Was just, yeah, and it's just like, what is going on? So, just don't get it. Yeah, I guess we're all getting old, that's what it comes down to. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess, yeah. But it's that old adage, isn't it? You don't, as, you, you don't feel as old as you are. Yeah. And, and I he don't you know i still think i'm 18 and uh, <laughs> right. still don't think, but i can't <laughs> i look in the mirror i go who's that who's that guy <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, it's like you try to do something and it's like why can't i do this oh, well yeah you're 58 grimmick just just either leave it or, or get on with it and endure the pain <laughs> so, so let's get back to it okay so you're in yeah. the hospital you finally get back now tell me and people could still donate just click in uh, Steve Grimmett, Grim Reaper. I, I guess it's Steve Grimmett donations. There's still a link page for donations. Yeah, Tell is, me yeah. how your life has changed. Now you're back home, day one. What's it day like? One. It is totally different. Um, I, When I first got back, I couldn't do anything because my upper body strength wasn't anywhere near as good as it should have been. Or oh, well, nobody's would be at, that, at this point. Uh, my leg wouldn't support my weight and uh, I, if I had to move around I had to get somebody to to help me 
um, I fell over several times. Well, I'm still falling over anyway, but um, uh, Millie has had to help me get up because all these things you get taught in rehab and uh, get, you know, if I fall on the floor, I now know how to get up. I didn't at the time because I wasn't having rehab. Um, just, just little things like that. Uh, and the first time I fell over, I was being cocky. I don't know if you use that term in, in the state, but overconfident. Yes, we use cocky here. Yes, we do. And I, it's and from I the stood, British English language that we take our... our yes. Our <laughs> I, I stood up and turned, and and, and basically I, I, I just shot it, and, I, and over I went. And, of course, the first thing you do is put your leg out to stop you from going. And of course, there's no leg there. So I went straight down on my stump. And I'm telling you now, that was the most painful thing I'd ever been through. Oh, that that killed me. But anyway, I've done that several times. Actually, the last time I did it was uh, New Year's Eve. I tried to fly out of a friend's house, uh, out of his door. I forgot it was two steps down. And I did this in my wheelchair. <laughs> I had a major spill outside his door, and the the, the taxi wow. driver came to pick us up. He says, "Oh, you've had a few." <laughs> I said, oh, I haven't. I haven't. Unfortunately, I had. I was pissed as a fart. So, yeah. So, so, so yeah. I mean, okay. Then, and then the recovery. Now you're in the hospital, learning to walk again with your prosthetic leg. Yeah. Uh, and Millie, Millie's now. She can't even be your manager anymore. She's become sort of your, you know, your extension to you, right? Uh, yeah. she's overloaded, uh, you know, and it's not easy for her either. I mean, it's not only you that gets affected, but you know, your family, right? I mean, how, do, how does that play a role? Yeah, it, it, it affects her, uh, not quite so much now because, uh, the, the benefit system over here is absolute rubbish. So she was thinking about going out to work anyway. Um, so basically that's what she's done. She's gone out to work, and it's a full-time job, so I get left on my own every day, uh, which is okay, because I can take care of myself. I've always got my phone with me in case anything happens. Uh, she lives, she works literally just around the corner, um, and uh, so, but it, it did affect her in a, in a massive way, but it also gave us the time to get through most of this together. Um, you know, she came with me because I was going to uh, Oxford, which is a city near um, London. Uh, every two, uh, it started off three days a week and then down to two, and it stayed at two for quite some time. So she would drive me, and then I started getting really frustrated because I can't drive. And my car is a, a, a stick shift, and I can't drive a stick shift anymore. So I had to, I have to drive an automatic. And uh, that so uh, you, you you can get cars on benefits over here, and uh, I've now got one. But it took so long that I was getting frustrated because I was just sat in the house doing nothing, and it was driving me crazy. So we bought a, a an automatic car, had a left foot accelerator um, a conversion done on it, which I actually bought from America, and. Uh, put it on and hey presto I was out driving so it was it was, it was fantastic but then I, I took a test in uh, in Oxford uh, to prove that I could drive left footed okay so I did that um, and then we have uh, say this this thing called motability where they supply you with a car so I, I've had a I've got a brand new car with a left foot accelerator already installed and I'm free as a bird now, so it's absolutely fantastic. That was a moment. So that was. I don't know if you if you go back to when you first wow. took your solo uh, drive in your own car, uh, or went out in a car for the first time on your own. You know, you were beaming from ear to ear. I'm sure, uh, as I did all those many years ago, and and that's what it felt like. You know, it was it was fantastic. So that was just one thing, and, and then. You know, my my uh, physio uh, physio people said, you know, listen, you are confined to a wheelchair, whichever way you look at this. 
you know, you will have the aid of a prosthetic leg, but you you are uh, from now the rest of your life you are confined to a wheelchair. That kind of hit me a bit hard that one, but I I kind of look at the wheelchair now as like part of getting around, part of doing stuff. I mean, I've I've smashed two up already because I. <laughs> I do stuff I really shouldn't do with them, you know. They they go everywhere. It goes everywhere with me, and uh, so uh, yeah. So there's that, and then altering the house. Um, That's a big one. That's a cost one. Does the government pay for anything there? Do you get any subsidies? Yes, they do. They pay for the whole thing, actually. Not well. I suppose yes. In the long run, it's the government, but it's uh, our local um, uh, council that deal with that. And but just to get around, I've had to alter the downstairs. Uh, my life up until a few months ago was all downstairs. We've got a conservatory which is built onto the side of the house. That's where my bed was. Uh, I, I had a toilet in there as well. Um, and then I had to, uh, my guitarist Ian, he's a builder and he widened the doorway for me from the lounge into the kitchen. My brother makes uh, windows and doors, and he made me a new door for the for the back uh, back door, so I could get out. Um, it's impossible for me to get out the front door in this house, so I have to use the back to get out to my car and stuff, and uh, at my workshop. And uh, so that we've had to pay for all that. But then a few months ago, I had a thing called a Stanner stair lift put in. And that I can now get up to the bathroom, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, but the doors, so what the government are going to pay for now, or our local council, uh, having the door, doors widened upstairs, we're having a wet room installed, uh, and then they're going to be altering out the, out the back of the house for a, a run for me to easily get out of the door and into the car park, which is literally behind my house see, and then a, see, right let me, up to let me, my... let me ask you this so all in all that everything you have to modify on a daily basis everything yeah. you, you know from your car to your home how much yep. came out of pocket as a percentage like 50 percent came out of your pocket and the government paid another 50 percent but what what percentage would you put that at they don't uh, they do it all they do it all I, yeah, I haven't had to pay for, I'd say, apart from the downstairs, because that was a need, I really needed to do that. Um, and they would have done it, but I couldn't wait, because it still hasn't been done since the day we applied for it, for the grant to get this done. It's still not done upstairs. So uh, whilst I've got the, uh, the, the stair lift in, uh, it's still difficult for me to have a shower. I can, but it's really difficult. Um, and... Uh, but but they are paying for the whole issue. They are paying for everything, which is fantastic. It, it just took it. There was a gap, though, right? There was a gap between sort of like the payment, you know, and applying and the forms yeah. and yeah, talking yeah, to the yeah. government. There is this huge yeah. gap. That 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 was a problematic area. And you weren't working, yeah. right? That was nope. a huge gap. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Can't. Oh uh, yeah. And I can work obviously now because of my prosthetic. But um, yeah, I couldn't. Um, I couldn't work uh, because I was in still in pain a lot of pain and uh yeah it was uh, uh let, let me look at some comments here okay here's a here's yeah. a great comment that you'd like okay let me read some stuff here impellitary yeah which is uh, he says what you have been through is unimaginable steve you're an inspiration to all of us keep on rocking and not only i think it's to people who are who have got an amputation and musicians and both right it's yeah it, it's it's uh, a it's Winston Churchill. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, well, okay, for the uneducated. I know Winston. Don't worry. I know about Winston Churchill. I'm almost fifty years old. <laughs> That's people that are listening as well. You know, Winston Churchill was uh, was our uh, prime minister during the Second World War, and one of his quotes is something that I will never ever give up, and that is well, I've just said it actually is never, never, never give up. And that is it. You know, I, I, there's, no, there's no way that I could give up doing what I do best. No way. And it, if I did, 
and then I went to see a band, a local band, or I'd be like climbing the walls if I got home. So it's like, right, okay, I've got to do this, but I can't. And it was painfully obvious when I first put the prosthetic on and started to walk that it's going to take its time. I thought I'd be out on tour by now before it, this all, you know, before I got my leg and everything. And it was like, no, you've got to slow down. You can only do this. And that's fine. That's OK. I'm good with that. But, you know, just just guys, you know, if, if you're struggling to get a deal or you're struggling to get whatever, don't give up because it's there. It just takes it. It may take several goes at it, different angles, whatever. You're going to do it. Just keep going. Don't ever give up. Simple. All right. On Winston Churchill, a true hero during World War Two. Yeah. Um, uh, Rodrigo, Rodrigo says filthy eight dies of liver failure. He was 61 when he passed away. I mean, yeah. Just, there was. There's also a, one of my friends. You know, Billy. He he asked for. Um, he said that there was a Garmin commercial that you were in. Is that? Is yes. that can you tell That's, me a little bit about that? Really, really fast. Yeah. It was. Uh, I can't remember what uh, Super Bowl it was for, but actually Garmin uh, wanted to, Garmin did and do still uh, do stuff for the military with GPS. Uh, they were getting into or had gotten into uh, GPS for cars, sat navs, and uh, just wanted uh, to do a commercial that was hard hitting to say, look, we're here and this is this is what we're doing sort of thing. And we did this commercial for, for a Super Bowl. And, but I, I'm sorry, I can't remember which one it was. Um, and uh, I spent three weeks doing that. And, uh, you know, re like recording. Uh, I sang the song. And, uh, well, they, they, they asked me about it. I'll I I tell you what, I first, got in, I first got into it through a company called The Singing Serpent in L.A. They asked me if I could do a song. For this thing and I said yeah no problem so two and a half weeks I was doing that they didn't get the song but the guy the the, the artist uh, for the, the artist director from uh, Garmin wanted me to sing the song because he was a Grim Reaper fan and it was like oh, okay fine so anyway I did their song uh, so I sang the song uh, in London and then they wanted me on set for the commercial which i didn't know anything about so it was like it was just like three weeks of mayhem uh and then obviously it went out in this particular super bowl and uh yeah it was good fun <laughs> that's really cool that's really cool actually i didn't know that uh, so thanks billy so uh luciano says i have tickets on in argentina wait i have tickets on argentina yet steve but we love you we will wait for you, I guess he's they're waiting for tickets in Argentina, so he's waiting to buy tickets in Argentina, Luciano. I think that's what he's trying to say. Yeah, it could, well, it could be, or he got tickets for the last show, and they're 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 going to hold them open for. Okay. So I didn't make didn't make it to Argentina, so uh, but yeah, I, I love Argentina, and I love the I love the people, I love the guys. It's a fantastic place to visit, um, and yes, it's it's May time sometime. I don't know any dates yet, but. It's May that we're going to go out to South America again. And uh, Christo says, do you have a sample of the new album? Well, let's not push it that far. Okay. No. <laughs> Just, play that, Just play something. Just play something. Pull yeah. it out. I'm giving out. No. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Um, what else we got in terms of comments here? I'm Just going through them. Sure. Here we go. Uh, greetings from Honduras. So, you know, we're all over the map here, uh, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, greetings from Honduras. Uh, Jimmy, it's good to know that Steve is back in action, and uh, that's that's positive message there. So, what about um, so the tour? When is this officially? Uh, that's a big question, I guess. When does mm -hmm. the tour begin? I guess when when is the is there a date? Is there a tentative date that you're aiming for? It's beginning. Well, it, yeah, not yes. The the tour the touring starts. Real for real touring, staying doing, away. I know you're doing one offs, but I mean, when is the yeah, tour? We're doing, doing one offs up until May, and then uh, no, March. I beg your pardon. We're doing a small tour of the UK, 
uh, with uh, a friend of mine's band called The Darker My Horizon, and we're doing uh, three, maybe four shows in the UK. Then May, we st early May, we start uh, to go out and do the South American tour, and that'll be for a month. And then we've got dates uh, in between all that, and we're looking to come back out to the States in uh, maybe end of August, beginning big beginning of September. Nothing's planned yet. Well, yeah, yeah though, I, I, it's tentative. I get it. Yeah, you're working on it. You're working. It's work in progress. It is, yeah, and it is being booked because uh, Rodrigo, who just uh, yes. messaged that it was he, um, he is now the manager, yeah. and uh, he is working together with Dean Sweat to to pull all this together. <laughs> yes. Good job that he's doing. Uh, oh, yes. Here's a Roman 8018 says, Hey, do you think you will be coming to North America on the next tour? I think so. I just, we don't know when. Yes. Just, no, it, it'll be sort of end of, let me say, end of August time. We'll be out. So just, just keep looking at the um, uh, Facebook page and it'll all be uh, put on there. Uh, that's right and Steve, it'll be Steve Grimmitz Grim Reaper just go to the Facebook page so that's Steve Grimmitz Grim Reaper uh, Duke Dolman says was blasting Lust for Freedom driving to work today and Lust for Freedom is a great song so, which one was it uh, Lust for Freedom was on the second one or the first one I don't remember third one third one third one there you go <laughs> I don't sound very <laughs> professional Steve <laughs> no you haven't done your research I, I, I could sing it I could sing it though <laughs> But you don't want to hear me sing it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, was blasting. I uh, know Duke Dolman says, share. Steve, you are an all-time great. Uh, oh, again, the way people write stuff. Steve, you are an all-time great of metal. So I guess he's just trying to say that you're an all-time great metal artist. That's all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. GP365 says, thanks for all the great music over the years, Steve. You may carry on like the metal badass you are. And of course... Impelitary is saying, you're going to like this, he only buys Garmin. That's it. He's not going to buy any other GPS but Garmin because Good. of you. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, and, and, and Garmin. Are you still getting you. checks for Garmin, by the way? No. 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 But it was a, it was a, 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 a massive payday, I'll tell you that. It was huge. But it was, uh, it was good fun. I, mean, I, I never really thought about the, the money until it arrived. And I was like... Holy shit! There's a lot of money here. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, that's it. It's the biggest advertising uh, spot oh, in big time. Well, yes, yes, yeah. Super Bowl, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, tell me about. Um, okay, let's go back to your life and how it's changed. So now you're getting ready for the tour. It's it's all tentative. Yeah. What about? You know, I mean, I know there was a quick little bit of a talk about a book. I mean, are yes. you still writing this? Is it finished? Do you have a date? Do you okay. have a... Tell no, me about the book. Tell me about the book. It, what I, 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 a little bit, we were going to, we, we tried to work with a guy who does uh, sort of um, uh, biographies and, uh, and all that sort of thing. And, and uh, he's too busy. So it's like, right, okay, fine. I'll carry on just writing ideas down, uh, which I've st I'm still doing now. And then I spoke to a friend of mine um, uh, who, who has wanted to write a, a book with me for as long as I can remember. And I'm saying, OK, let's do it. Um, we need to get together because I need to know how you want to put this together. And then he said, well, the last chapter will be the best one because of losing your leg. And I thought, well, that's really not how I want to do this. I want to obviously I don't want kids out there or kids fans to to read another uh sex drugs and rock and roll book because it's been done and it's been done so many times i wanted to do say put some sex drugs and rock and roll in it but i wanted it to be about what happened to me um and all the things that i've been through all the things that led up to it and trying to tell people, look, you know, this is what's going to happen to you if you continue to do this. You will become diabetic, and this is what you're going to have to do when you are, and this is what can happen to you if you are. So that's, I think, that's where I want to steer the book to. I don't. I think uh, it's a know, great I, angle. 
could even be yeah. a bestseller. You know, uh, I think it's a wonderful <laughs> angle. Yeah, I, I will do the sex, drugs, and rock and roll thing. Uh, you know, I'll put all that in. But <laughs> <laughs> well, of course you got it. But it, it, I, I want it to be a bit more of a message than 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 that as well. You know, so you know, I look at it as an inspirational story. I mean, uh, again, I. It, I think there's like a movie there, you know. I mean, then again, who am I? But <laughs> uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I it's 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 you know it's it's the will to keep going, and uh, it's a human story. And I think just when you first told me about the book last time, I go, "What a great book! I can't wait to pick this up." I mean, just I, mm. I don't know. I think it's an insp it's inspirational on just so many levels about you know yeah. just keeping the faith and just uh, you know the music faith and the. Yeah. The, the human yeah. faith of just trying to survive, yeah. right? Go ahead, sorry, yeah, it, to cut you off. It, it's 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 all about really, you know, it, the fans, my fans, you know, because when they started, you know, because there was obviously a, a a love outpouring when when it, it all happened, and I was like, do you know what? I I just cannot let these guys down, you know. I just I can't imagine what it would be like not to see them and to to make them smile the way i do and and that's what kept me going i can't give up i mean whilst i was sat or lay in the hospital uh, for seven weeks i had a half hour a day on free internet there just wasn't any other that was it and it was very poor to be oh, fair geez, i remember that steve i remember that i remember so steve, I, and millie was telling yeah. me all that yeah yeah so i was i was looking up prosthetics and how they would affect me how i could do this how i could do that and and i just didn't give up on that you know and i was looking at motability when you know for when i got home and all that stuff uh, so i kept positive that way because i needed to get back up on stage for my fans and that's been the the single most uh point that i that i can make for myself i've got to get back up there and the first time i did that in germany this year last year uh, made me cry and that's you know i've it not made done us all that cry we all saw you standing and bang your head and it was uh, incredible yeah. it's just incredible yeah and and then i decided because that that stage was split level i decided i was going to go down the stairs so i asked millie to come and help me down the stairs to get to the crowd and they just went absolutely ape shit and, and yeah and that well it gave me that and it made me cry Getting goosebumps. And, yeah and it was uh, it was something else and that was the the whole reason i did what i did done and not got down about it because yeah. i knew i was going to get back up there and and see these guys again and it was fantastic and it has been so right. Spe speaking of fans here's an off oddball question what's some of steve's favorite beers from uh, oh. rain on your parade, right? Okay. Steve, this is a very uh, important question. What are some of your beer favorite beers? Yeah, well, I th it is actually. I mean, I, I do like a lot. I do like ale, and probably one of my what my favorite <clears throat> uh, brewed by uh, the Witchhaven uh, Brewery. It's called Hobgoblin, and it's an absolutely wonderful yeah, beer. But it I is a that. real ale. Yeah, it's it's a real ale. Um, and that's my favorite and pretty much anything that they, that that particular brewery do is, is pretty good. But then you've got a lot of other different beers. You've got Spitfire, Bishop's Finger, uh, oh, loads, absolutely loads. Uh, uh, oh, what else is there? Oh, the Doom Trooper, Bar. The Trooper by Iron Maiden. <laughs> the Trooper, uh, I don't like that. The Grim Reaper be... beer. The Grim Reaper beer. Steve's but Grim yeah. Reaper beer. See this Witchwood Brewery, they do a Grim Reaper beer, but it's only ever so often. So I couldn't get them interested in doing it, which is a real shame. I but remember, um, I remember that. yeah, but I, I I I have talked to a brewery about it. I've got to meet up with them and see what sort of uh, you know to, to to see how we can go about it. And uh, because I know with the Trooper, they've got you know big. They I think they've got a brewery for it. Uh, so they know how to ship it worldwide and all that sort of thing, which I don't, you know, not well, not yet. Anymore. So uh, yeah. Jeffrey says hello from North Carolina, USA. Duke Dolman says, Steve, your vocal performance on the classic Scream Reaper albums are some of my favorites. 
how did you get started in singing and find your voice? I mean, I think you told me you're not a trained singer. You just... No, I'm not. So go no. ahead. Tell, tell everybody how you first decided that you wanted to be a singer. I mean, and, and how'd you find that voice, that, that high head voice? <laughs> right, well, uh, I used to sing in my bedroom, which is where uh, a lot of people start. You play guitar and all that sort of thing. And um, I was not into metal at all. Uh, in fact, the reason that I sing is uh, Mr. Elton John or Sir Elton John uh, and still remains one of my favourite artists of all time. And uh, it's, uh, it's, say, it's, it's him that's made me sing or, or got me singing. And uh, then I was singing in the bedroom when my girlfriend arrived one day and she stood outside listening to me sing. She said, you're really good, you know. And I said, yeah, yeah. And two weeks later, she got me a, a, an audition for a local band. And uh, we, we played at, on Saturday mornings at, um, it was a thing called, it was ABC Cinemas at the time. And, and they used to do a Saturday morning minors, what they called them. And we used to play there. Our uh, band split up and then I joined Medusa and that's how it all started uh self-trained when i got with medusa it was obviously heavy metal and uh the guitarist um wanted to do some judas priest i didn't know who the hell they were to be perfectly honest with you and so i started listening to him and listening to the song that he wanted to do and that was called starbreaker and uh, I started singing it and found I could just do it just, you know, without any effort at all. <laughs> so that's that is my singing uh, tuition right there. It's all self-taught. Um, I have in the past uh, got a, a, a technique to be able to sing uh, on tour which I didn't really in the early 80s. I didn't have, I just belting it out. And my sound engineer said, you don't need to do that. You need, you know, you need to lay off and do it. But I couldn't do it. I just, but now I've learned how to do it. I, I, I now know how to lay off, but still hit the high notes without uh, rasping up my throat. Uh, and so I mean, I, I, in, when, when I was in my 20s, we used to do four shows and then a day off and then three and a day off. And, that, and well, so far I've done uh, in South America eight on the trot and I can still carry on. So massive differences. I don't know whether that's part of getting older or what. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, yeah. What about, but, how about, sorry to cut you off. Um, I'm getting these texts and I want to read them because it's your fans, right? Sure. They just they just want to. They're, they're throwing in oddball questions here and there, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, where it was, uh, Greg, are we, are we going to see a live album in the near future? Yes, we will do. Uh, I just want to make sure that when we do it, it's uh, <sighs> prepared for, and then. <laughs> I think about it when I'm on tour and it's like, well, where can you do this? There's only a certain amount of places that actually do do that. So, but I think this time um, we can take a laptop and, and I've got the equipment to plug into whatever the guys are using there and actually record it and then bring it home and mix it. Um, so yes, there is because I'd, I'd really like to do one. Um, and that was something else that Chris and I talked about me. Um, but obviously, you know, bless him, that's not going to happen anymore. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. I was certainly not with him anyway. You must have a whole bunch of shows recorded, eh, from the last tour? I have, I have, but they're just not good enough. Um, uh, <laughs> in fact, the last one, which I thought was going to be good enough, I got all the, the, the uh, memory sticks home and the one wouldn't work. So all I've got is cymbals and one guitar. So, uh, yeah, so it was a real pain in the backside. And I've tried to get in touch with the uh, sound engineer that recorded it, and um, his email's not working anymore. So, yeah, shame. Well, I guess but they do a whole play on the leg, you know, thing, you know, on the last leg tour and things like that. Yeah. You just, 
<laughs> yeah, it, it, the, uh, uh, the sub- in good fun, in good fun. I don't get yeah. not meaning to. Uh, not meaning no, to. no, no, no. Nobody has upset me at all. Uh, you know, my my middle brother and my son were texting jokes all the time when I was in hospital, um, and you know, I was just like killing them back. You know, saying, "Well, is that all you can come up with?" You know, and, and all that sort of thing. But yeah, no, everybody does. Had it. Um, even the last interview I did, that the, the, my local paper has been following us, uh, following me, sorry, and um, you know he he wanted to crack jokes. I could hear it, and I was like, uh, "Do you want to crack jokes about it?" And I think he th- he thought I was being a bit pissy with him, you know. And and I said, "But go ahead." I said, "Whatever you want to do, you're never going to upset me. So carry on." <laughs> and he and he did no nothing upsets me at all. I, I don't really know what would until it happens, unfortunately, you know, well, which will so be across that line, right? I hear you. I hear yeah, you. I, I, but I don't think, you know, unless somebody is really mean about it, mean spirited. Mean about it, yeah, uh, then, you know, but I haven't met that kind of person yet. You know, so, yeah. So, who, Steve, what, what else do you want to tell us? Okay, so there's a book. There's a yeah. book. And, and I mean, you don't know when that's going to happen. Has it been written? Has it finished? No, I've only got ideas. I, okay. I've got so hundreds nothing. of ideas written down. I need to get together with this guy to say, right, okay, this is what this is the format, and this is my memories from that format. You know, because I could write it, but it would take me years. Yes. So I need somebody uh, to do that for me from these ideas. So let's get um, a metalhead out there who's a really good uh, yeah. editor and uh, help out Steve here. So we, we need we. <laughs> Pronto, pronto. Yeah, pronto, yeah. <laughs> so, Nick, um, yeah. Here, here's actually, you know what? I should have talked about this right at the beginning of the show. Steve, yeah. is the pub night still on in Swindon on the 20th? It certainly is, Tell my us friend. About this, Steve. Well, it's, it's just literally, you know, for, for people that are, well, wherever they want to come from, they can come from any country they, they wish. Uh, we, I live two-minute walk from a pub and uh, my local pub and we're going to have it in there and we've just invited people to come along and share the night with us if they want to come you know? and uh, and that's it uh, you know we're just calling it my legless party and the reason that we're doing it my legless party is because when you get drunk over here people say oh you're legless you know because obviously you get so drunk your legs don't work and, yeah no, it's a play on it. It's a play on words, which is a cute little play on words. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. it. So it's pub night in pub Swindon night. on yeah. the twentieth. Sitting yeah. down with Steve. Uh, will there be any singing involved? I well, I don't know. I have thought about it. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, obviously have the band there. Well, I, the band are welcome to come, of course. But I, it, I wouldn't set it up and do it all in there. I do have, however, a, a guy. Uh, a local guy that uh, we I've got a duo with. Uh, we used to do charity work all around Swindon. Uh, we raised about twenty-five grand, I suppose, all in all, um, for local charities um, because he was the CEO of the Swindon Borough Council. He's now not with the council, so we can now charge money for doing shows. <laughs> so, so we're going out as a duo and. Uh, we, oh, I suppose we do about two hours of stuff, but it's all it's all covers and uh, stuff like that. So we've got some uh, White Snake in there, Journey, Eagles, mm-hmm. all the stuff that we like, you know. And uh, screw anybody else if they don't like it. <laughs> Here's another question for you, probably the last question, okay? And I know I've asked you this question. Oh, geez, maybe like two interviews ago. Uh, you're on RCA. Um, <laughs> and uh, you had to get an international lawyer. Uh, not know, and, you know, on RC, of course, they didn't know how to promote the metal bands. Does Steve think it would have been, if you had been on another label, that you guys would have been bigger at the time? Um, possibly. You never know, though. It could have worked the other it, way. I mean, it could have been a worse could, label, for all you know, right? It could, could have been terrible, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I have never thought that RCA was not the band, not the label to be on. Um, I thought they did a tremendous job, considering in the 80s we didn't have internet. 
so um, which is a major major bonus for us these days um, and I think they did a, a phenomenal job uh, the unfortunate part was with Ebony Records uh, which screwed things up completely uh, they they took us to court for leaving the label, although they owed us a tremendous amount of money and didn't ever pay it to us. Uh, they even tried to take uh, RCA to court, and that was basically when it was decided that that they pulled the plug on us. You know, and I don't blame them. Who would? Who would they? Uh, they don't want a band that's given them loads of grief, or not them loads of grief, but but. You know the, the the package comes along with it so you know that was the shame of it all really and uh yeah and i think it was hard times during the 80s too you know but whatever it worked out how it worked out and that was it yes you know? all the executives got paid in the bands did it <laughs> really hard times i remember those days yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. everybody and, got paid but the guy's actually making the music yeah i still haven't been paid any money from rca at all it's incredible yeah, yeah. So but you, that, how so close gonna, are you? Are you still pursuing that court case? Yes, still pursuing it. And yeah, I remember this. Is like now we're talking about. I think we spoke about this like five years ago, maybe four years oh, yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's been ongoing for over ten years. Me trying to get the money that we're owed from RCA, you know, and uh, it, it is ongoing. Uh, I have got a little further. I don't want to say anything at the moment, but we've got almost to the point where it's done and dusted so yeah yeah, yeah. i think we pretty much covered everything steve we uh yeah. talked about the one year uh anniversary i don't know if that's the right word but we'll say the one year anniversary of the tragedy that happened to you yeah. we talked about the book thoughts going in the brain trying to put yeah. together a book a potential live album when the time is right the new yeah. album you have seven or eight songs you said that you have ready yeah. And uh, what did I leave out? And of course, on the twentieth in Swindon, the the pub, you will be yep. um, meet and greet with friends and uh, fans. Yep. And we spoke, yep. of course, about Chris Tangaritis and how he yep. was going to produce your album, but um, you know, unfortunately, the passing of him. And of course, mm -hmm. Fast Eddie Clark and Motorhead. And I think that pretty much summarized everything. Um, is yep. there any last words you uh, want to? Um... So Greg saying live album or a new Grimstein? I don't know. I think it's going to be oh. a live album. We did. We uh, no, it'd be a live album, but St Steve Stein and myself are working on another album. Okay. Yeah, we've got loads of songs written. We have had for a long, long time, but Grim Reaper took over, and uh, and and you know, unfortunately for Steve, I've left him in in the in the dark with all. The, well, not the dark, but I've had to put our project on the back burner. And, what, what about Bocott? Uh, any, uh, any? I, I know that uh, I've spoken to Nick briefly, and uh, what about him guesting on in the new album? Any talks of some sort of reunion on a song or two? Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he, we did that last time, but it didn't, it, 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 it didn't happen. I don't know why, but uh, it didn't happen. But yeah, I mean, uh, yes, I'd love him, love him to guest on it for sure. Uh, and as far as us working together, I've got too much on to actually do that at the moment um but yes i think we we you know we definitely got to do it so it will happen but it's uh, it's just a question of when so i think we've reached we've hit the hour mark i think we've pretty much exhausted every topic i really <laughs> appreciate you uh talking to me today steve uh, i no. love the updates i know that we've it's actually maybe even been a year since we last spoke so uh you it's know something Buddy. yeah i know yeah it's got to be something like i think i talked the last time i talked to you i was back home actually actually yeah yeah that's right that that the charity gig in your neighborhood yeah. that we, yes. we spoke that's about right. yeah 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 yeah, so, yeah yeah it's been good it's been a it's certainly been a life-changing event <laughs> my guest steve grimmett grim reaper uh steve grimmett's grim reaper you can check him out on facebook on his website you know pick up some merchandise make a small donation why not you know help steve out and his uh, family as they you know try to get back on tour uh and some great music in the future steve we will talk soon okay okay buddy thank you jimmy you take care and thank you to all my fans uh for staying there with me and being the reason that i'm getting up every morning thank you steve i'm gonna call you right after this okay okay buddy okay bye